And I'm actually grateful that this happened. But I started talking to this girl. I was like, all right, you know, let's hang out. <laughs> Welcome to Sunny Side Out Podcast. I am your host, David. I'm going to start off today's story or today's video with a story. So it's about loneliness. And when I was 20, early 20s, I knew a person that had what appeared to me to be all the luck with finding a relationship with somebody. And they apparently knew what to say. They knew where to find them. Everything for this person just seemed to work out. And I would hear these stories and think, well, that sounds great. How do I do that? Like, I, not, that's never been me. I can remember countless times in high school where I would see somebody and thought, oh, you know, I wouldn't mind talking to them. But I wouldn't, you know, they, I wouldn't know what to say or anything. And it would just kind of like a fart in the wind just <laughs> disappear. Right. And, meeting this person I was like man how do you how do you do this like teach me like I want to learn because you know it's like I'm a man I have I see attractive girls and I want to talk to them but it's like that's a trick that not all men have but apparently this guy did so I was really I was envious and I was like I wish I could do that I wish I could talk to any girl and get their attention and retain their attention and you know, I was I was jealous. But I remember thinking in that time, I know I'm going to grow out of this. I know that this is not something, that not a feeling that I'm going to have for a long time. And somehow it, it was weird because even though I wanted to be able to talk to all these different girls that I may or may not find attractive, and I wanted to maybe go on a date with all these different ones. I, I knew that that was not something that I wanted. And it's, I remember hearing a quote and it was for all the things that we want when we're 18 years old, thank God we don't get them <laughs> because I knew that I was young. Well, I mean, I'm young now, but I, I knew that I was, young and young and inexperienced and i i just somehow i knew that that wasn't going to give me happiness i and it doesn't you know i've now come to realize that that's not something that you want deep down that's not something that you need and it's not something that you should have because i mean we all know that the more relationships you get into short term or long term the less likely you are to have a successful marriage or relationship throughout your life. Cause I mean, if you've been with 50 people, what's <laughs> number 51? Like that's the, how is that one going to be any, any different than the ones before? That's not going to be special. So, I mean, we, we know that you should try to keep that number to a minimum. Obviously you have to try relationships with different people. It's pretty unlikely that you're just going to get one right off the bat that's going to be your soulmate, but yeah, that was just looking back. I, I'm thinking, I'm glad I didn't do that. And it's not like I could have, I could have anyway, <laughs> but, but it's, I'm, I'm glad that that didn't work out for me. I'm glad that that didn't happen, which is something that I wanted to at the time. All right. At least I thought I wanted to. And yeah, it's just, like I said, thinking back, it's something that uh, a young and experienced person would think that they want. I think it's, and, and I say these things, I guess, because I, this was, is, and probably still is one of my biggest struggles, you know, growing up, um, you know, loneliness. But I think when you're trying to chase something to cure a loneliness 
or your loneliness. You just aren't true to yourself anymore. And I say those things because I find myself in situations today where I'm, I know I'm just not being true to myself because I'm trying to go after something. So it's, I think it's something you have to constantly keep in check and reel in and say, you know, am I chasing this person or am I trying to cure this loneliness or am I being true to myself in this? And I think when you're having such a hard time with this and you're not finding an answer, you're just not being, you know, you're not being yourself. You're not being your, your true self. And I think that, I think it's, it's very hard to notice, but I think it continuously hurts you. And that's just from me speaking and living through it. I mean, that's yeah. my personal experience. So, yeah. I, I mean, there's of course the idea that, you know, you, your life is a, a culmination of many things and you can, when one thing leaves. And so in this big, uh, this, ex, what's the word I want to use <laughs> in this example, the, the void is the loss of a girlfriend or a boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that means that you have a void in your life. Well, just because you don't fill that void with something bad, like drugs and alcohol doesn't mean that you are a complete person. It just means that, yeah, you don't have something bad coming into your life, but that doesn't Still mean missing something. Yeah. So, I mean, and that's that's a very dangerous territory for people, just human beings in general, because I think we're we're always yearning for something. Like very few people, I think, unless there's some Buddhist guy sitting on top of Mount Everest, you know, practicing enlightenment or something. There's very few people on this earth, young, rich, poor, old, you know, sick, healthy, whatever that are just completely content with everything that they have. I mean, who, who is that? I mean, nobody. Yeah. So I think, I mean, if you have any kind of a void in your life, you're always going to look to fill it. I think you have to be okay with being lonely. Um, I'll just give a quick story. My friend growing up, uh, he was the only child. And I mean, he was just always really good at being alone. Um, you know, and I just was so, I don't I want to say jealous, but just like, how was he, how was he so good at being alone? Like he would always just like, you know, share stories of just like stuff he was doing or, and he would do all these things by himself. And I'm just like, and this is something I struggled with for a very long time. And like I said, probably still do, but you're always going to be lonely. There's always, you know, and, you know, I've, I've great friends, great family, you know, um, but it's, you're still alone at some point, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe through a s struggle in that very instant, um, or just being in your own mind when there's no one else to help stimulate it, you know? Um, and I think that's something you learn over time and it's hard to know that you're going to learn over time. Um, yeah, but yeah, what are, I guess, what's something that helped you be alone? I think for me, it's because you, you can be alone and enjoy being alone sometimes, but it's the times that being alone and you wish that you weren't, but being okay with it. Yeah. That's, that's the kicker because, you know, and we all, when you come home from work and you're like, oh, I just need a couple minutes by myself. Everybody has that. And everybody can think, oh, I, I enjoy being alone. But there are some times where you you could really use some some touch. Like you could really use some... A shoulder to lean on. <laughs> yeah. But you don't have it. Yeah. And in those moments, I got to say, all right, what can I learn from this? How can I improve myself i mean even if i mean i'm not dating anybody but even if you do even if you are dating somebody and they're not there with you right now it's like 
you got to be okay with them not being there. I mean, when somebody's super, super clingy, like that's not good, you know? Um, and I, I think, and thinking about myself, there's a, a path in the woods up north that I like to, to walk along. And I, that's kind of like my soul searching spot. You know, you were there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, a lot of times when I'm walking through there, I'm by myself and I'm just walking and thinking and, you know, enjoying nature. And I'm, I think when I was walking through there, I'm really thinking this is, this is the time that I got to really console myself and think I'm by myself. I'm lonely in a sense, but I'm okay. You know, yeah, it would be nice to have that special somebody with me. Well, I don't even know who they are yet, but it would be nice to have that special somebody with me. But until then, I, I'm all right, and I gotta be. I mean, you think about how many people that, like those young kids that, they're in high school and their significant other breaks up with them, and then they end up committing suicide. Like that's, I'm not downing those people, but you gotta, that's not the only person in this world. I mean, you, you have to be okay with being alone. And it's, <laughs> it, yeah, that's a whole other tangent, but I, yeah, <laughs> I think, I think just letting that sink in, and that's something I talk about in the Thanksgiving video is you got to plant those seeds now, the sooner the better, so that at some point in your life, you're actually going to get it. Because like I was talking about in that video, yeah, you can be thankful for this and that, but you don't really, really, truly understand it until later in life. And so with loneliness, you can say, oh, yeah, it's good to be happy with yourself and all that self-help crap that we hear all the time. But the sooner that you plant that seed, the sooner you're really going to start to formulate and put your thoughts together. And truly be okay with being by your by yourself, even at your lowest points. You know, because I mean, we're both pretty solitary people, and so I'm sure it comes easier for somebody like us. For somebody that's more extroverted, they're gonna feel that need to be with somebody more often. But yeah, I think just thinking about in my life, I've. I've always been like a quiet person, mm-hmm. but I've always enjoyed that thought of being around people, and especially when it comes to dating. I mean, I, 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 you know, I've always wanted that, but it's just like up until recently, I haven't really been okay with just being by myself. Because you, you can say to yourself, "Oh, I'm fine, I'm fine," <laughs> but until you truly are. You're not. Yeah, you have to. It's so cliche, but you really do have to like yourself before, you know, or they always say you have to love yourself before you can love somebody else. And yeah, that's like just so cliche, but it's just pretty true at the same time, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and I think you can still be down or have a rough patch because, you know, to me, life's always going to be a wave you're still going to, you have to go down to go up and up to go down. And, you know, you're always going to have rough times, but even being, you have to be with, okay with yourself during those low points. And that's very challenging and takes time to learn. And I, if you haven't learned it yet, just like keep trucking through it. Cause you, you will even know yeah. like time, time heals a lot. And that's so cliche too, but it's, and it, it's funny because if I, if I showed this to my younger self, I would be like, well, yeah, obviously. Yeah. But I wouldn't get it. Yeah. And it's, it's just, and again, this is something that if I was in relationships all the time, I wouldn't be here where I'm at now. Like I, I'm not saying that I'm, you know, the all knowing mature person, but I'm definitely more mature now than I would be if I was, constantly cycling in and out of relationships and not not learning the lessons of being okay with yourself i mean we were just talking about before with 
being in and out of relationships, I mean, yeah, it's you are fulfilling that humanly need of loving somebody and receiving receiving love. But it's it's damaging for one thing to constantly be cycling out of relationships. But it also doesn't give you a chance to really learn what it's like to be alone, which is something that you need to learn <laughs> as a person. You know, and it's and we all know that the more relationships that you get in and out of, the less likely you are to have a happy marriage for the rest of your life. Is like you're saying, if you're with fifty people, then what's number fifty one? Yeah, I, th- I think that's like, you know, when you're if you're in and out of those relationships, trying to fill that void. Oh man, now I just lost my train of thought. But well, I mean, you get addicted to it. Yeah, and you you just become like so dependent on it. I think, um, you know, I think for me, I always said in relationships, you know you shouldn't depend on the other person to, you know, bring joy to your life. Like, I guess, quick analogy, like, you know, I always tell my girlfriend, like, I want to, I want to be in the race together. I want to be teammates. You know, sometimes you got to draft the other person. Sometimes you got to, you know, slingshot your partner Mm -hmm. forward. I don't want to be carrying, you know, so, you know, so dependent on the other person or they're so dependent on me, I, you know, where you're, you're bumping heads all the time and you're crashing into each other, slowing each other down. Having that independence in a relationship is so important. Cause I was, you know, single for pretty long time. I, I mean, five years, but, um, you know, now I'm in one and learning that independence when you're out of a relationship and then when you're in one, it's just, it's a lot easier mm-hmm. to be able to handle yourself when your partner's not there or whatever it may be. I think, you know, of course, another cliche is love is blind, love is bliss. That's true. I mean, thinking back to mine, I'm, I'm not saying that it was bad or that it was not meant to be. Well, I mean, it wasn't meant to be, but that I shouldn't have been in their relationship or anything, but thinking back, it probably went on a little bit too long thinking about how things just, how it played out. And that's probably something that a lot of people have. They think after the fact, yeah, it was probably over about this point, but we just kept going because you're not, you're just, you're scared of saying, all right, not working anymore. Let's leave on good terms and just go our own ways, you know? Yeah. Um, I forgot my train of thought. (laughs) (laughs) Your mind just comes blank when you're thinking about loneliness. uh, Love and, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Love and the bliss is, yeah, just, and I mean, of course, we can get into stoicism of, managing your thoughts and managing your emotions and realizing okay now is the time to step up and end this thing which i mean that can play into a whole nother conversation my boy marcus aurelius was really (laughs) laying down the law back in the second century yeah do you like your person to lean on yeah you got to learn how to lean on yourself yeah that's a good way to put it is listen that, to yourself. Yep. I mean, we you listen to other people or, you know, talk to the people. You should talk to your, I mean. Because, I mean, the only. Be weird, but <laughs> talk to yourself. <laughs> the only person that you're always in control of is you. Yeah. And they, like, I mean, you know, if you believe in God, then you're always with him. But, yeah, I mean, the only person that you're really with is yourself. And you can talk to yourself. Not out loud and maybe don't do that in public (laughs) but like when i'm in the woods i just think to myself and i think about my previous self and then myself now and i think okay where what have we learned where have we come where are we at now you have to give yourself some grace sometimes yeah 
Because I, I know that I'm I'm hard on myself. And I when people say, oh, don't be hard on yourself, I think, well, you should be. And you should have standards that you set for yourself. You should have goals that you should achieve. And if you don't get there, it's not just okay. Like if you set a goal and you fail, it's not just, oh, well, I'll get it next time. No. If there's something that you want to achieve, then learn what it takes to get it. Don't just say, oh, it's, uh, it's all right. But at the same time, I mean, you can't dog yourself all the time. Like we, we talked about before how you got to at least appreciate a, something about yourself. And you say, okay, well, I'm not good at this. I'm not good at that. But I'm, I am good at this, you know. Willingness to learn. Yeah. Being okay with the bad grades sometimes. That's one thing I've, I think, recently I've been thinking about a lot. Jeez, I, that didn't even make sense. But, um... Just like, you know, I've been learning so much stuff with this house and have so many ideas. And then just the more I'm thinking about and discovering, the more I'm like, man, I don't know anything. <laughs> like, I'm I'm lost. And that as I get older, I'm just like, nobody knows what's going on. And like, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm going to get off. <laughs> the topic of loneliness if I keep going but yeah I think you just get confused I, I'm just maybe just speaking for myself now but sometimes I think you just get lost in life and you don't know what to you don't know what to expect and then you feel like oh man I'm going through this alone even though you do have so many people around you but yeah I think sometimes yeah not knowing answers is maybe like I just if you're taking a test right you can't look at other people's papers. You're like, oh, man, I really wish I had some help here. And maybe I think like life's like that sometimes. We're just like, ah, I wish someone could give me an answer right now. Because it's like, mm -hmm. you know, I, and I could just be like, you could think of that in any way. Like, how do I control this emotion? Or, I mean, too, and like for a student, a test is, all right, I'm going to take this test on what I've learned. But... And this is something that my boy Dwayne from Dry Creek Wrangler School <laughs> talks about is the test is not the test. The test is life. I mean, if you fail a test in school, yeah, it's not good, but it's not like life is over. You know, that's just one piece of the puzzle. It's like loneliness is one piece of the puzzle. You know, it's like you're not always going to get your way with relationships with people especially with a significant other that, you know, that's a compromise on a win lose. And yeah, I mean, it's, you have your ups and downs, but see, so yeah, it's not forever. Yeah. That's something that's hard to understand. I mm -hmm. think with anything, like I I just mentioned, you know, time, but you know, time heals everything, but it's yeah, just... when you're going through like the pain and struggles, you're like, and I know because I went through it in high school and you're just like, man, when is this ever going to get better? <laughs> but now I think of it and it's just like that went by really quick. Yeah. So, yeah, same thing with like, you know, those years of being single. I was just, you know, so down and chasing because I'm just like, you know, time was slipping away. And I'm just like, you know, two years, three years. And I'm just like, uh you know, freaking out. And then it just came to a point where I was like, man, yeah, whatever you got to like, try something else. Cause and I don't mean like, you know, try a different method to chase girls, but <laughs> you know, you gotta, you gotta think differently. Cause you know, this ain't working out. Yeah. Cause if you're doing the same thing over and over and it ain't working, then just making yourself miserable. Yeah. So and you have a good time with yourself. Yeah. The the one time, and I'm actually grateful that this happened, but I started talking to this girl. I was like, all right, you know, let's hang out. <laughs> and I, you know, set up like, all right, let's hang out this place this time. I show up there. I said, I'm here. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not in Michigan right now. I forgot to tell you. 
Like, are you serious? <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, sorry. Like, okay. That was uh, a hard slap in the face. <laughs> but at, I remember th- I remember sitting in the car then. I was like, all right, that's it. That is the last time I will chase anybody except for the man upstairs. Like that, that, that was, that was a pretty low moment. And I was like, all right, that sucked, but this is a learning experience. And after that, I was like, all right, plan, you know, new plan, not doing that anymore. That went. I was like, okay, you know, chalk one up for the books. But yeah, it's a good learning experience. You got to, that's one thing I've been realizing a lot too lately is I need to learn more. Mm -hmm. I need to like, you know, I want to, I see, I can't even talk about it because I should just do it. I need to, I want to buy some books and read them. Mm -hmm. Like I just, I've never read books and that's just something like I want to, I want to just change the way I do some things because I want to learn more. I think about life yeah. and just like more than just facts. Is I it guess. like I think with with wisdom and we we think about wise people? Yeah, they may have had more experiences than other people, but I think when what wisdom really comes from is just being perspicacious in life is not letting these opportunities to learn something just slip away yeah and just really thinking okay something bad happened what can i learn something good happened what can i learn and just yeah spending time alone just to put your thoughts together because i mean there's so many people that have experience i mean i know a few that have a ton of experiences they're going out meeting new people going to parties doing different jobs but they're just they're just like not paying attention it's like dude do you want me to get like a bib to catch your drool while you're going through life like you're just you're just brain dead and i'm not saying i'm the smartest person i'm not saying i'm you know the the all-knowing and like I, i could definitely benefit from paying attention more to certain situations but just take some time to think about what you're doing in the moment and what just happened, you know, because I, I think that's where wisdom comes from. It's not from having these extraordinary experiences that nobody else has, because you could have that and not pay attention and mm-hmm. learn nothing. So I think, you know, just, you know, spending some time alone to put your thoughts together and just paying attention. You know, I mean, that's, one benefit from loneliness is that you could get a lot of time to think by yourself. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes too much. It feels like, <clears throat> yeah. I guess that's a struggle too. I face sometimes I feel like I think too much and I'm, and then I don't do anything. Cause I'm just like, I become lost in my, in your head. That's, that's one thing I've been trying to figure out too, I guess lately. It's just like, especially with my house, I just like think of all these plans and then I just find myself you know, four hours have gone by and I've only thought about things and I've done nothing. It's like if I, I'm going to forget about all those things anyways and probably not do them, I should have just. So that's like kind of a new challenge I've been facing. Yeah. With thinking a lot. Is I just, I just go into space and, and then I'm not doing anything here. Yeah. I'm thinking about like that that part from Spongebob where like Patrick is just standing or sitting there with a hammer in his hand and a board nailed to his forehead. (laughs) Just (laughs) doing nothing. It's like, that's that's how some people are, you know, maybe living in the moment. Mm -hmm. That's one thing I, I don't think I appreciate enough. Cause I'm, you know, I like, you know, me and you were just so goal driven and, I'm just speaking for myself here, but you know, you just like, you just think of all these goals and you just forget like right now, what can I do to like make this situation better? Yeah. Or improve something or be better for myself or Mm -hmm. instead of sitting here being down about why I don't have this right now, like what can I do right 
right now in this moment that's yeah gonna be fun and i think like you know using that time that you're alone usefully like do something with that time because i mean you know there's the expression um depression is past anxiety is future it's like well figure it out right now yeah you know i mean that there's a, a few people i've heard say if you're single oh well use that time to build yourself better you know i mean it's not like you can't do that when you're in a relationship but take advantage of your situation yeah and like i think too you know when you're in a relationship you're not thinking or it's harder to think about what you want like a hundred percent you know like if you're in a relationship and you said if i wasn't what would i want to do right now and it's hard to think about that when you're in one yeah you have to make sacrifices for the other person and i think that's just being in a relationship but yeah when when and there's nothing wrong with that um but yeah when you're alone you have obviously more time to just focus on your on you on you which yeah then there's not there's nothing wrong with either one mm-hmm. you know take advantage while you're single to to have those certain opportunities and then when you do get in a relationship with someone that's forever in your second half then take the opportunities that come with that just don't you lose just, yourself in a uh in a relationship yeah and that's why i say you always have to be you always have to be independent you know Mm -hmm. like i like my girlfriend to do her own things and have her own hobbies and hang out with her friends because you've got to have that i'm it's you're you're two at the end of the day you're you're two separate people and you know perfect relationships and perfect couples you don't like exactly all the same things and your days don't work out exactly the same and you're mm-hmm. you're two different people and you ride through life together but you're still you at the end of the day and you know they're still them and yeah just enjoying your enjoying yourself and like i said that's so much easier i find it for me it's so much healthier and easier in a relationship when you can when you can do that because it makes me appreciate my time spent with her more and then it makes me appreciate my time when she's not around or or doing her thing because when you're desperately searching for somebody and you're in relationship number 51 you're like oh i gotta this person's gotta be by my side all the time you know and then maybe they're getting dragged down or you're getting dragged down and you're just you you're not you and maybe they're not them anymore and i think that just for a disaster it kills relationships so going into relationship when you and i'm i'm no expert at all i'm just speaking from my experience that's all if it doesn't work for you then it doesn't and i think that's a great thing about life is the advice you hear from us some i think will apply and some will not but Mm -hmm. i think this just comes from experience from us but it's just it's a seed yeah same but yeah just for me it's been much easier to have that independence and ability to be by myself being in a relationship now yeah i think that's helped me much more than my first time around which is a hard thing to learn (laughs) it took me a long time to learn yep yeah you just got to plant that seed as early early as you can that truly being okay with being alone and lonely like that's not something that you can just wake up tomorrow and have. But the sooner that you plant that seed, the better. Well, I think we'll wrap it up there. That was good. <laughs> Feels weird to be back. It's been a while. Yeah. <laughs> so like and subscribe for more. Thank you for sticking around. Thank you. <laughs>